Hello and welcome. This is the uh, end of the 13th day of February 2018. Let's go over some short-term Fibonacci analysis as well as some Fibonacci theory and see how it works out. I really can't do Fibonacci retracement other than corrections on the downside that happened to occur within what has just been that of a break of this resistance field. Several days of just hanging in at this level. I've been talking about this and how huge of a setup this is, and here we go. I can't tell if it was gonna be three days ago, yesterday, today, or if it could have been tomorrow, next day, next week. As long as it's within this pattern like this and holding the 18 in a very constructive way, you got to be ready for these kinds of moves. And we've seen it before. Here was a situation in December going from 005 to about 02. That's a 4x gain almost. Huge, huge moves. And now we're going to relay how much this gain will be from two levels. From one, this double breakout low area of single 0134 we'll call it a 1345 basis handle point and now it's breaking out from this 180 or 1800 level as well so those are the two key points which it has okay so let's take a look at this more short term let's go to the 400 minute time frame and what we're seeing in here with two hours and 26 minutes left in it so the vast the good, good good majority of this period has already went through as this would be uh like seven hours approximately in time each period but lower volatility moves in here your sideways congestion since the third of april april third of february week and a half almost but in technical analysis you have a huge move whether it be up or down how is it going to handle there after the major buying or selling concludes and in this case it just remains in a sideways state of mind or it did and now it, it has broken it okay let's take a look at this next on say a three hour time frame there's significant volume there's the break of resistance. I've stated this many times. When you break a key level and it goes, it's going to go big. And well, one hit on the 3rd of December, it comes back again on the 6th into the 7th. It did it again on the 9th of such. It comes up there on the 11th. And here we are now leaving the 13th and it's breaking through on that resistance. Even notice how we have the situation here. You can't tell what the next move would be within it, but with this price action and the 18 average getting smaller in here, that's an indication that, when, that it's, it's tightening up. People are obviously unsure, but there's no need when you're a long position to, oh, I got to get out, I got to get out, because at least myself, I realized if it was the play to go lower and break this support, it would probably just be a bottom opportunity down here. Of course, that play didn't exist. Anyone hoping to get buy order fills, just keep hoping. Or you could remove them and raise your buy orders, e either or. 60 minute time frame, there we can see a green candle up, green candle up, red candle sideways correction, not that big of a, a retracement down. A quarter of the way through on this one, just some sideways consolidation. That's a decent amount of time on candlestick chart analysis, a quarter of the period. Usually oftentimes will represent a good majority of what the final will oftentimes be for its volatility. Of course, if it's small, you can get a decent size gain, turn what this, maybe make it a little bit larger, maybe come down here a bit, test this low, or maybe come up on the upper end and test this high from the last couple of periods. That's uh, one thing to look at, but you want to shorten it out more when you're looking at something like this. So let's just even go to the 10 minute time frame. You see the nice little rally come up to the 209 handle, the correctionary selling the original one, bringing it down to 196. When you have this situation, you break this resistance. All the selling that came on here, 
were only from people that had filled the buy orders in after this rally. So 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time. All of these sales that ended at nine, little after nine, were from orders filled after this time frame. Basically, what I'm saying is when breakouts and breakdowns occur, and another reason for these bigger size candle moves is because the order books could be relatively thin at times when you have these, and that's why you can have decent size moves down. Uh, you also got the early profit takers the waiting for the first move higher. You're getting your little bits of profit. And then you have another wave higher. Again, little bits of profits along the way. Volume has been maintaining its way throughout this uh, so far, which is pretty good. I don't really take too much time to look at time of day and what the most common hours trading are. I mean, there's always people awake at most times. I guess when the sun is fully over the Pacific Ocean, that should be when you have the least amount of trading, I would guess. And when the darkness is completely over the Pacific Ocean, for the most part, there's more people trading. But really, there's time somebody's open somebody's closed at all times and there's always the big traders that have their cell phones and such on alert well they'll get up like a firefighter will when big volatility comes into form yes i want to try to calculate some fibonacci upside well i know what the number is going to be it's relatively simple very simple for on the daily time frame I'm looking for a rally, which is easy to see up to, but works out to be the exact 002 figure. So that's easy to calculate. And then a move lower. Now I could use this low here, but no, I'm gonna use this exact low. And the calculations which I receive is 14, well, the, from the difference of the 1410 and the 2000 handle is a move to the 2482. What I'm going to do within this uh, is try to calculate a couple levels before that, and this is where I'm going to be using a lot of theory. But before I do that, I'm just going to put this in at the exact or close enough to the number, so 2482. Okay, that one's in. So therefore, what I will do in this is I'm going to put Fibonacci from the low of 2000 and the high of 2402 and only line the two key numbers up. Although I'll be interested to see what the 23.6 number will be as well. So I'm going to go for those three numbers actually. So 2000 and 2482 actually, I think this is. Twenty four eighty two, yep. Okay, then. So, what we're going to do is where's my line here? Two thousand. Should have a horizontal ray that I put in at. Yep. Format this, let's go O two four eight two. Okay, so now what I want to do is take a look at the next number, which is twenty one oh five. That would be the equivalency of making a 23.6 move, which is your basically your first key level you would go to. You would expect to make a move back down to the 20 handle, so on and so forth, 2105.
as we can see that is the area which it is pretty much at now it's the current test mark so if we look at this on the five minute time frame an area it almost got up to in its first move it did again here we'll see if it can make a move up again and maybe stabilize within that area that'd be really interesting to see if that would happen that'd be cool if it did actually and if we make a move again make another match of say 214 ish area and then just chop above and below this for maybe 45 minutes or such that'd be pretty cool okay so the next numbers above that that i'm going to be interested to see play out will be the 272 2172 handle and the 2285 and i would forget these numbers like no other so i'm gonna format these keep them in so when i take a look at them moving forward in the next few days they will be ready i think it was 2175 i would have forgot it already Twenty-one seventy-two. You know what, Pierce Extra? Sure. Twenty-one seventy-five, twenty-two eighty-five. Okay, so we have that one there. Place another horizontal right, and we'll make again this twenty-two eighty-five. So those are the two areas I'm going to be looking at to see if they become interesting short term levels on the way up. An idea for such would be just the market making a pattern something along the lines of this from here on in. So again like I'm talking about doing some sort of chopping around like this for a bit. And then from that point, maybe make a move up at a pierce above this resistance. Have a decent size original sell off. Then maybe come up back down in here. Maybe come in and then just have a big break here. Then back down. And then of course, uh, making it to its uh, next main target there after that which would be the 248 handle and then the one in between here from this point to this point and that would be the 76.4 and this again will be all part of Fibonacci theory analysis is the 2359 handle I'm not going to put the line yes I will just because it's on my mind now 2359 So there we go. Only problem here is that I'm going to have to manually delete this. There should be a thing where I should draw all, or remove all tools from this part. All, I think they're just the scribbly line things. I'm just going to pause the tape and remove them all now. And then switch it up to the three day time frame, which I've just done. When you look at the perspective of where these lines are in comparison to this chart, you can see how short term each of these levels I have put up are, which means they're not intended for really even the daily time frame. They're intended probably for like the 60 minute, two hour and even shorter, but preferably even the five minute, 15 minute and all those really short term time frames. For these smaller ones, just to the left of the screen, uh, they're just that. The next small key level for this time frame is just this number point here. Because even that is in at a very, very small increase to this point at just the 250 handle. Hmm, let me just see this for a second. How can the Fibonacci, uh, da, 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 da. yeah, you know what? I did Fibonacci upside from this move to this move, and that's great. 
Let's do some more. Let's do some more because the big Fibonacci on here is you're looking for an up move. We're looking from the entire rally from early 2017, basically when my rookie days of trading just started as far as the crypto side of things anyway. My rookie year is almost coming to an end in the next uh, week or such. But anyway, throwing that part aside, that's neither here nor there. Uptrend higher. So now the downtrend goes down to the 10 number. The uptrend is up to the 20. So let's just put in 1,000, 2,000, up target of 36.69. Let's do the same thing by putting this in like this. So we got the up first up key number in at around 25.22. It sort of coincides with the 24.88 number. So that'll be interesting there. We also got a number in at about the 29.18 handle which would probably coincide with the psychological single 03 number. And then a small number at 0.3179 before it gets, of course, up to the target of 36.69. You can ignore the up and down targets in this example. So that'll be interesting to see how these play out. I'll be following these in the videos moving forward over the next few days. But as I've been stating over and over with cryptocurrencies, when they're ready to go, they're going to go. There's just nothing you can do about it. I got two more things I wanna go over. Number one is sell orders when you sell something and it just keeps going higher, what to do? Because I sold some Litecoin at 19999, just right below the two number. So I haven't got it back yet. I guess I'll put a buy order in here. If it happens to come back, it does. If not, so be it. Because I can only sell a small amount, but I'm able to do so given how many that I have. I've th been thinking more about Litecoin Cash. If I think it's such an amazing opportunity that I want to get in on it like quick and have my funds, then I suppose I'll find a way to transfer Litecoin out of my hardware wallets in my Trezor device that I love so much into a, another one that I am very securely confident will be able to take my funds. I'll be able to withdraw them thereafter. Then when there's nothing in there, I can use my private key and then give it to them. They'll get, they'll have no access to any funds. I don't like the fact that Litecoin is forking. However, if it becomes very valuable, then hey, that's cool. Now something else I've been thinking about as well is we have, or I have my Trezor wallet as an example. Say time passes on, I'm like, you know what? I don't want to do anything. But then I find out months later that, oh my goodness, I have X amount of US dollars worth of Litecoin cash if I take it. I mean, I could buy another Trezor wallet, maybe move all my funds to that and then take that private key and give it to them. Uh, that's, if it would make me free money, that's a possible future plan B consideration. I mean, I want to be very safe with my funds and that's what it always comes down to and the big reason why the vast majority of them are on such a device as the Nano Ledger Trezor wallet and the Keep Key, I think. I have never used a Keep Key, so I don't know how well they work, but I have used a Trezor and I have used a Nano. The Nano Ledger is the one that I got my family uh, involved with so I ex helped set them up so I'm experienced uh, using that and of course I use the uh, the Trezor myself again I don't like the fork I think it's not needed maybe they know something about their new programming language that would be cool I'll always give them the benefit of the doubt for that because we can hear all we want about Charlie Lee and maybe other Litecoin people not supporting it well, that doesn't mean that you can't get free cash on it. However, talking further more on it, the Bitcoin cash, same way there. A lot of the core members didn't support that. 
but I would really like to know more about the team members if they want to be involved in any major serious project and anything that its value, even on the one-to-one -one scale, can get even 10% of its base core value, which is Litecoin, considering how large its market cap is. To have 10% of Litecoin's market cap, you have to have a pretty darn near good freaking coin available. I'm very, very skeptical on the situation. I wouldn't be surprised if one of those Litecoin cash coins against the Bitcoin exchange is like 100 Satoshi or 50 or 217, not even worth it, a total joke for you wanting to go after it. I wouldn't be surprised about that. I'm not that enthusiastic right now about it but i've been thinking for the last 24 to 36 hours or such or day and a half around that just maybe if it gets good i could take my 24 code key out on the wallets get the private key out and of course this would be after i withdrew all my funds then download a litecoin core wallet or like not litecoin core litecoin cash wallet paste the private key in, then I'd have my Litecoin cash, move them to the exchange, sell them. And then that would be that. Now I think with the, uh, with the Nano Ledger, it looks pretty easy how you can actually make new private keys on a device, but with the, with the, with the Trezor, I, every single time I plug it into another computer, it always goes to my PIN number. So I wouldn't even know how to reset a new PIN number on the Trezor, but I do realize there's always a there's always a means to an end to get to where you need to get to, and that's the only way you can, can get there, or it becomes by far the more affordable or better way to get there. Then that should always be what what you would take. Okay, this was a longer short term analysis. I did a quick like pretty much a two and a half minute uh, uh, timing video on the breakout before this was longer wanted to go over the key Fibonacci points and for the last uh, little while uh, I guess for the last day or so talk about the plan B as far as the Litecoin cash is concerned have yourself a great day and I'll again talk to you on Wednesday